Well, thank you everyone for being here. Uh, close to the end of day three, and we're very excited about this panel um, about ACM and collaboration with RM. A little bit of history before we go into the weeds. Every Mundo, 10, 12 years ago, this is how it started. Every Mundo started doing SEM campaigns for different partners. Back then, it was not only airlines. So this session is very special because SEM is very close to our heart and to our business, of course. So um, I guess just some background before we introduce each, uh, all of us and, and the value of SEM. I think we're all very aware that search engines are a very powerful tool for uh, brands to put their message out and for users to find products and services that they're looking for. So this is again why it's very interesting for us now that every mundo is part of the pros world to understand how we are using all this intel and even data from RM to optimize campaigns beyond just regular clicks and conversion rates. Uh, the objective today is for you to walk you through all the very cool things that we're doing with our lovely panelists here and, and yeah, for you just to, to get inspired by it. So. With no further ado, uh, well, I should have started by introducing myself. My name is Berta Rubio. I'm part of the customer success team at, um, at Every Mundo, and I have with me Carolina. Carol, yeah. you can uh, hi, you. I'm Carolina Ruiz, and I'm the director of performance marketing in Every Mundo. Mm -hmm. And next to us, we have, again, our three lovely panelists. I'm going to put our lovely faces back in there. We've got Sara, Fabian, and Dimo. So guys, if you can introduce yourselves, tell us a little bit about your role at your companies and your experiences, your previous experience, how you ended up in the world of SEM. You want all that? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so hi everyone. Thank you for being here. It's a pleasure. Thank you for the invitation again. I'm Sara Freitas from Tapor, Portugal. I'm leading the e-commerce and digital department uh, for one year. So I'm new in the industry. And it's a pleasure to be here. I hope I can share some insights, interesting insights about SEM, which is mainly something that we're using across industry, so it's not particular. Hi, everyone. I am Fabian Torres. I'm Digital Marketing Manager for Avianca. It's a Colombian airline. Um, thanks for the invitation, very much, the team. Um, for me, it's a pleasure to be here. Uh, hello, I'm Dimos Petas from Aegean Airlines. Aegean is the flagship carrier for Greece. Uh, thank you from my end as well for the invitation. And Fabian and Sarah, nice to share the floor with you. Uh, I've been... So only with me. It's a pleasure only with me. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. I've been uh, with Aegean the last five years uh, and I'm now heading the e-commerce uh, team for the last uh, one and a half year. So, well, I guess just to get started, you guys, Sarah, you briefly mentioned like SEM is the same across industries. And we want to start by exploring that concept a little bit. All of you have experiences in different industries. So I guess we want to open the, the, the panel by asking you, how is doing SEM for airlines different? And what are the main challenges? It's not different, sorry. <laughs> Um, even though um, the techniques are the same, and obviously we have a few challenges, like showing the right prices at the right time to the right user, still SEM is an art, and you can use it the same way across industry, independently of the product, the service, or the target that you have. From my, from my experience, in different setups, uh, multinational, local, regional, um, when we think about SCM and the power of it, we also need to think, where are we starting? And we should start with the relevancy of the content. That will really support and drive all your techniques, independently of being paid or on media. Um, so the relevancy of the content, the segmentation and targeting that you use, obviously the investment that you, that you are able to, to do, um, and also thinking about how relevant is SEM in your omni-channel strategy and what you really want to achieve with that, that's the starting point. You need to think about that. You also need to think about how to 
trigger even harder the reach that SEM gives you by having also a very clear and pragmatic SEO strategy because that will give you sustainability. At the end of the funnel, and because SEM is bringing you, hopefully, the traffic that you need and that you want, you need to optimize to conversion. So it's really the mix of all these techniques that make SEM a very powerful tool. If you only use SEM, uh, you will probably not be as successful as you can be if you have the full mix working. Um, I think uh, this uh, airline is part of a dynamic industry and we have some challenges. The main for me is that every day change the, the price, change the availability. We have some seasonalities during the year, like Black Friday, and the marketing needs to align uh, all channels, no just SEM, because we have SEO, we have meta search, social media campaigns, and we need to, to show the right message at the right moment for the right customer. This is the, the challenge for me. Um, yeah, I couldn't agree more with both of you. Uh, especially I want to mention, uh, except from competition with fish. Uh, I come from Telcos. My previous experience was in Telcos, and now in uh, airline I see much more fierce competition in, in SEM from airlines, from OTAs, from everything. Uh, it also has to do, we are an airline in a country that has significant seasonal fluctuations. So comparing summer with winter, it's just like living in two different worlds for us. Uh, because we have to capture summer demand but we have to invest effectively during, during winter. Uh, also, the geographical characteristics, due to the fact that we have to address to multiple audiences. There are different countries with different characteristics, with different ethics, with different uh, tones of language. So we have to adjust, uh, we have to adjust the messaging on that. Um, Last but not least, it's the, as we said, the, the complex behind pricing. We should be relevant, as both Sarah and Fabian mentioned, and we have to adjust all the changes at the same time. And, and also, we have to adjust to real-time events, such as uh, we have seen a lot during COVID flights, cancellations, uh, changes, operational changes. This has to be also, uh, this, this also affect uh, the SEM uh, campaigns. Yeah, I agree. And, and also, one thing that caught my attention, Sarah, you mentioned, and Fabian, you also touched base on that, is how SEM is part of a omni-channel uh, strategy. It's not only about responding to demand in Google to capture, of course, these users who are searching for a specific flight. So when it's about comparing this channel to your other channels, what it's, how does it compare? How is it significant versus other channels in your strategy? What is the importance of this channel for your direct sales? Uh, SEM is the, the most important channel uh, in our strategy in Avianca because the sales contribution is high, but SEM doesn't work alone. SEM needs for the other channels like uh, display campaigns or social media campaigns because for those channels, it start the customer journey sometimes. And it's important to understand what is the attribution model because based on that, we need to take, a, or we, need, we need to find what is the the best decision to to make a distribution investment. Not just uh, in SEM, as I mentioned it, we need to, to understand what is the, the role for meta search because in this channel we need to put investment. And for for us this year the main challenge is 
how we can reduce the cost of sale because we have an important uh, sales goals versus the, the last year, but we don't have enough money for, for achieve that. And we need, uh, as a part of the marketing team, to, to improve our, our cost of sale. Um, of, I agree that ACM is the most important uh, channel in, in the in direct because we know that the customer is there. ACM equals that the customer has already searched for you. It's not about creating an awareness that, okay, we are here. So we know he's there, so we have to capture that kind of demand. Uh, so we have to adjust techniques on that. Uh, so in comparing with uh, social media and display, this is why it has better cost of sales, greater CTRs. It's because we know that the customer is actively seeking. I'm here to play the devil side. So SEM is not the most important um, traffic acquisition channel that we have. And I think it shouldn't be. Um, still, it's something that you need, that we all need. First, because we will also need to work for volume and not only for qualified leads. But that should be your aim, to really change from having a very um, heavy, from a budget point of view, but also from a, a revenue share point of view, to have a very heavy piece of SEM uh, and all your paid media channels versus the own media. Still, it's very important. Why? Because if you don't have that baseline of attracting more and more volume of qualified leads at a certain point, you will lose business. So it's a balance between keeping your SEM strategy working to get volume and quality of, of traffic. Otherwise, the conversion will not occur. You will be investing and investing and investing. Your number of users and views will ramp up, but at the end, no conversion, no sales, and that's not what you, we want. And thankfully, we've been working in a very optimized way with all our partners, and every Mundo has a, a, a huge importance in, in this. But that's our strategy. You need to find yours. That's our strategy because we want to be Sustainable, first of all, a sustainable airline by 2025. That's what we are targeted um, to achieve. Um, but we also want to have this strategy of being also in a sustainable way next to our passengers. And we, worked, we want to work on retention so that we keep on fueling the funnel with new leads, qualified leads. Again, I'm always saying this. But we need to work on the lower funnel to get more loyalty and advocacy. And if you have this balance, guys, girls, it will be sustainable. OK, so I guess we all. And plus, oh. you will have the right arguments to go to finance and say, I need more money. <laughs> because I'm That's giving right. you the money, you better give me mine. <laughs> That's right. So I guess we can all agree that it's very significant in the direct channel acquisition. It might not be the number one. In some cases, it might be the most important channel. Uh, but you all mentioned about collaborating or setting goals or getting all our different data sources to understand how to optimize for this or like how does this play a role in your entire direct strategy. So now is, I guess, where we start going into the world of collaborating with other departments, particularly uh, RM, and I guess like the, the question here before we go very, very into specifics about what we're doing uh, with our three partners and, and their internal departments is more about your goals. You said you talked about 2025. You talked about reducing a cost of sale, like getting more budget. I want to hear maybe a little bit from all of you, like how do you guys set your budgets? How do you collaborate with all departments in general to understand or how you take this information from other departments and put it down into, into SEM terms, let's say. Yeah. 
Uh, it's an irony, but I will say that uh, this collaboration is the only positive that COVID left behind. We had to make the most value out of nothing. Uh, so we had to combine data to, to, to see what we can get from everywhere. Uh, this was the first time that we in Aegean, for example, started to combine and discuss data from different perspectives. Data from digital, data from RM, data from sales. Uh, and we have made a very good process on, on that due to the fact that we are really collaborating on that. And we saw a lot of paradoxes in that. For example, we could have a route with a good cost of sale, but RM at the same time, this route has low load factor. Good for us, bad for RM. We managed to find a balance in that, where we need to push more, where RM could be satisfied with our techniques, and towards you know, the common goal of uh, revenue optimization. Uh, so all the teams, all the teams started working together. Even our team with every mundo now, it's not a GN team and every mundo team. It's an expanded team for us. We we are all considered as part of one team. So this is this is a type of uh, how we gather data and uh, all together. And uh, thank you again for the collaboration. So I, I was listening to you and thinking about that. Um, well, it's not a cliche, but it's a, a very known sentence. I think you all know it, and you will say it better in English than I will, which is something like, if you want to go fast, go alone. But if you want to go, if you want to go, exactly. So that's 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 what really collaboration means I, I like to to call it more than collaboration it's co-creation um, I, I, I heard this term uh, back uh, I won't say when when did I listen to that it was long long time ago even though I'm only 27 years old <laughs> for the ones that don't know uh, so um, so uh, co-creation is is really something that makes all sense to me um, and it's not only in digital, it's uh, across, across the company and, and in everything that we want to do. So um, digital can work in a silo, but shouldn't work in a silo, can't work well in a silo. So I think I have here my very dear revenue management director. And Mario, are you there? No, he's not. <laughs> <laughs> So no co-creation with revenue management. <laughs> Let's forget that part. No, but it was it was really interesting to um, enter the company and and understand that even though we were working in silos, there was the will and the clear understanding that the more we work in an integrated way, the better we would have uh, our results uh, appearing. So we we are merging the majority of the data that we have inside the company. Um, we know that probably all of us have the nightmare of having a CRM here or a part of a CRM here and then Amadeus there or a server or whatever and then a database and then e-commerce and then a website. So it's, it's, it's a challenge. But surprise, it's not uh, a specific challenge of this industry. Um, I've seen it in, in many other places. And the way to overcome this is not only with the technology, so integrating the everything, which takes a lot of time and a lot of effort and budget. But it's really about merging people, getting them uh, on the same room, um, comparing data and acting on that data. Because it's, it's amazing to have data, but then if you don't do anything with that, uh, I'm sorry, but you will not get anywhere. And here, um, we bring you today the, the case um, in which we joined revenue management data, uh, load factor in this case, um, with with our needs for SEM. And it's working perfectly. So we still have a long way ahead, uh, but we see 
that it makes sense. Oh, it's there. Yes. Um, we not only see, and it was easy to understand it, that it makes sense, because it really um, goes back to what I was saying before, which is working in a more um, uh, efficient way, bidding where you need to bid, investing where you need to invest, uh, instead of working in, a, in just a volume for volume, and then you don't, you don't convert, because in many occasions you don't have anything else to sell to those users. So you will be showing, if you have this data integrated, you will not only be optimizing your investment, but you will also be relevant because you will be showing the right price of the right route to the right user at the right time. So I invite you to speak with your revenue management department and ask them, give me your data. And, <clears throat> and also, in, for context for everyone here, like the way we work with our three partners here is everything that they've been saying about gathering information from network planning, from, from RM, for marketing, like understanding what are the new routes, where's the demand, what, do the, uh, what does the airline want to push in a specific certain amount of time. We work as, a, as, a, as an extended team going very specifically into what is the demand for a particular route. Is it worth investing in a route if my plane is full? This is where the RM... Um, where the RM component comes into place. Um, and another big component is we go into specifics. We look at the route performance. We have campaigns. We create one campaign per route. So we treat like, we like to think that we treat SEM at Arimundo as retail. Every route has its own performance, its own audience, its own demand. So we treat them separately. This also helps us come up with very robust reporting where we can say, the teams can filter, how is the performance for this particular route today in the last 24 hours? What can I expect in the next 30 days or 60 days? Are people really searching for this route? So collaboration is huge for us. The fact that you've been able to, to connect us with all these partners and you digest this information, you send it our way, and then we just make it very specific for, uh, for SEM. So maybe, Caro, you want to talk a little bit about very cool project that we're doing with um, with TAP already. Yeah, so I think uh, what we just mentioned is, you know, going with the customer and see what they need, right? So I think we should be open to hear what are the necessities because we're going to see three different examples here of different, uh, but the goal was to achieve, you know, better results, better and more revenue. Um, so here the necessity with TAP is like, you know, we have this data of revenue management, uh, we have Google Search at 360 that they have the bidding strategies there. Uh, how we can combine that data and make it automated. Um, so of course we need to do like first a, dig a little bit of digging. What is the information that we have available? What is the format that we have? And how we can connect all the dots together, right? So first of all, we have the revenue management data. Uh, so the way that we are uh, connecting that is with BigQuery. So the team of TAB is updating that data uh, constantly, and then uh, we say we need to put some rules, right? Like what, what, what is the goal, what, the why that you were saying in the morning, right? Like why we want to do this? I guess the output is to be more efficient and make sure that we are bidding uh, for the proper route, for the proper bidding, right? Because if we have a high low factor, uh, we just don't want to do anything. So that's when we get to go to those filters saying if we have a low, low factor, we do an increase or a push of 20% on the bidding. Or if we have um, a high, low factor, we're just going to decrease the bids 10%. And if we have, you know, like we say medium, uh, we just keep it as it is, right? Uh, these rules comes together uh, with the airline because the airlines are the experts on these rules. Um, and we bring the three teams together, revenue management, uh, the marketing team, and us, and we came to this uh, very good project. As Sarah was saying, we, can, we are getting to improvements, but we are uh, using, yeah, basically a BigQuery to gather the data, and then uh, we have the part of a Google Tag Manager to connect this information to a, a Google Search Ads 360, and basically Google Search Ads 360 push the data directly to the campaign. So again, this is a very good use case uh, for TAP. Um, and yeah, continuing with the use cases that we were talking of collaboration, I think uh, we can move with uh, Fabian. 
I know uh, that internally you guys use a very robust dashboards and you like to share data across all the different departments. So my question is uh, how we can train you know, other departments to use those dashboards that are very valuable, that have very good data, but that maybe they were not aware that they are available, right? So how, how you can train those you know, to the other departments? Yes, for Avianca, sometimes it's difficult to, to understand what is the, the performance by route because uh, we have operation in more than 24 countries. We have more than 150 routes. And sometimes make us mean route by route is difficult you know, because we don't have, uh, if we don't have the correct dashboard and if we don't have the, the information in the same view, uh, is more difficult, but can, yeah. Sorry, can you explain us a little bit an example uh, on how we work every Mundo with you in order to achieve this? Of course, <laughs> this project uh, was very important for us because we uh, integrate uh, business data with the low factor by root. Uh, we integrate se Google search trends uh, by root, and the main. Uh, web page metrics like look to book and for example if we have a, a route with a low load factor we need to to see what is the the behavior for for this route and sometimes the revenue management uh, tell me we need to increase the sales for this route but when I when I I will see the the searches uh, this route doesn't have a demand we need to create a demand. And in this case, we need to create a full funnel strategy, not just see SEM, because maybe uh, this year Avianca uh, launched new routes, and no, no all customers know that Avianca have this route. And this is my and my team uh, challenge to communicate for, for the right customer that the customer is interested in, in, in this route and create a an strategy. And internally, we need to, to see this dashboard with not just with the marketing team, just with the e-commerce team to see what is the opportunity for, for this route and the revenue management team uh, use this dashboard to, to understand what is the, the behavior for, for the business needs. Yeah, I think that's, and, and I think that happened, um, I think, the past month that we have, like, a huge meeting with all the teams together in Avianca. So, you know, some of them, they didn't know that this was there. So that's the thing. Let's just communicate with other teams, uh, share that information that we already have. Well, it's built for one purpose, in this case, the digital team, but it can help other teams to get to solve you know, whatever they were, you know, looking for instead of trying to build something that it already exists, right? So going to you, Dimo, that we have been partners for, I think, more than eight years already. Um, so how, you know, you work with every mundo, I guess, with new initiatives, experiments. Can you tell us a little bit of how we work um, together? Experimentation is in our culture. So we are more than happy to experiment and try new things. Uh, but before to experiment, we, we are not just shooting in the air. We are making some analysis with you yeah. in order to identify the area to focus and the, the proper opportunities. In our example, for, uh, to, to, give you, to give an example of, the, of this year, uh, we used the United States and the Australia markets that we know that they are very early bookers, so they book their summer vacation very early in the year. And the vast majority of their searches are non branded rather than branded. Yeah. And we saw, and we tried to, to figure out how Performance Max could give on top some more uh, uh, bookings and revenue on top of the non branded SEM campaigns. So, before experimenting, there's the entire process to select the proper, uh, the proper experiment. And it's very, very important to do that because a proper experiment can give us results and 
draw to conclusions that could help uh, that, could, that could help us operationally. So identify uh, whether we invest efficiently uh, or uh, what else we could do more to decrease cost of sale or increase bookings. Uh, it helps us explore market dynamics. So any new that we do in specific markets can tell us more about the specific audiences. And three, uh, makes us sometimes more innovative because uh, in this competitive landscape of, uh, of SEM, uh, innovation is needed in order to stand out from the crowd. So uh, we heard from you, Dimos, about these campaigns and the concept of incrementality, all these things that we're doing to capture available demand. We mentioned about non-brand, non-brand is generics. It's someone searching for flights from Athens to Lisbon. That is non-brand, pure non-brand. There's demand for that. People search for that in Google. But a big, big component that we also take into consideration is incrementality. Incrementality in terms of what are other um, demand streams that we can attack. SEM responds to demand. People searching things in Google, right? But Maybe there are people searching for flights in the summer. There's demand there. So what we've been doing is we understand that demand. We can create an air traffic custom page that shows itineraries departing on those specific states or depending on the behavior. In some cases, is last minute deals. People do search like that. There's a lot of volume and, and, and a lot of information available. So they search for that. They interact with the brand. They land on the landing page and then they go fully to the reservation process, which is ultimately our goal. Like we're here, we've been speaking about outperforming, on disrupting, like getting your users to convert. Like this is what we're here for. So we heard from Demos about performance max. This is uh, one of Google's bidding strategies. We work very closely with Google, maybe also for, for additional context, uh, with the different Google teams, the Google team in Portugal, in Greece, and, and in Colombia. Latin America uh, in general as well, just to understand what are those tools? What are the products that they are putting out in the market? How do they come to place with our strategy? It's not about adopting everything just because of the sake of adopting everything, but it needs to be profitable. It needs to give us, uh, of course, the most amount of revenue that we can at a specific cost of sale or a specific budget. So with all that being said, I guess, Sara and Fabian, if you can share an example of a campaign or something specific that you guys have in mind that we've done with, with your teams that outperform, no pun intended, your expectations. Well, I was not prepared for that one. Um, so, first of all, a, a campaign, we do a campaign because it's needed and because we think that it's the right time to do it. It's a, a combination of business needs and the consumer behavior trend that we're, we're watching in the market. And sometimes it's also triggered by competition, I must say it. Um, so historically, we have seen that the seasonality really takes you to have a better performance in certain, in certain campaigns um, rather than in others. I think that from my vast experience in this industry of 12 months, um, the, um, the campaign that surprised me the most was the one that we launched in Jan, Jan this year. But it surprised me not only because we, we did plan it when I think we should plan it. We had everything ready on time. Uh, we had all the customizations done and kudos to every Mundo because you suffer a lot with us. I know that. Um, and, and more than that, we had our branding aligned, all the marketing strategies, all the offline and online, the trade, everything. But what really made the difference was that the demand was there like never before. So the combination of all these, the right time to market, the right message, the right pricing, and being, in fact, showing all that, to those users, when they were searching for it, it gave us a huge advantage. Because I'm sure, 100% sure, that even if demand was there, 
But if we were not having done all this the right way, we wouldn't be showing our ads or our organic result or our uh, social media post to those users. And that really surprised me because the, the result was amazing. And also the feedback from the passengers um, to the campaign, to the visuals and, and everything, it was really, really positive. Um, building on the, the previous topic of, of data and, and collaboration, it's not only about having uh, revenue management or the load factor data, but it's also looking into all the all analytics pieces, um, looking into the NPS, the surveys that you launch, uh, uh, the comments that we're having on social media, which are <laughs> fantastic. Uh, grabbing all that and, and really make something, again, act on it. And I can tell you that even without having the full integration of all those um, uh, data sources, uh, if you take your time, if you select the data that you really think it's valuable for you at that point in time to analyze, and you act on it and monetize what you're doing, you will see the power of data. Okay. I have. <laughs> <laughs> I have two cases. The first one is a competitor's campaign. In 2022, we implemented a campaign for uh, the OTAs. We buy the uh, those keywords. And we had really good results, not just in terms of incremental traffic. Uh, we have, we had sorry, uh, incremental sales too. But this year, we did, did an agreement with the OTAs, and we stopped those campaigns because it's not healthy for both brands uh, by the keywords, the brand terms especially. Uh, because if I if Avianca buy the OTAs uh, keywords, the CPC will increase and in the same way for, for Avianca. And when we stop uh, or turn off those campaigns, uh, our CPC decrease. And if our CPC decrease, our budget decrease. And our cost of sale improve. And the other one is a bus, bus strategy. Now we are uh, bidding for a bus strategy because Avianca launch new routes, and the the routes the roads have a uh, short distances, and we are trying to capture those demand, and we are using message like uh, spend time, uh, spending more but sorry, save time, spending the same money. So. I guess from everyone's point of view, like I'm, I'm sure you would agree that we could be here for five more hours speaking about SEM because it's an art and a science, in my opinion. There's a lot of demand out there, and we work very closely with all of them, making sure that we capture it the right way and at the best, um, at the best CPC. So just to close this out, I want to ask you, Sarah, you mentioned your the success of your campaign in January is also because demand is back, travel is back. Like we have, of course, like we still hear about this concept of post-pandemic and travel is back and the skies are open again. What do, what do you think are the new challenges for the next, this next couple of years when it comes to SEM? And how can everyone continue delivering value to your business? Yes, the demand is there, but it's, it's not always there. <laughs> and more, more than, than anything else, uh, we cannot assume that demand will always be there for us because the competition is also aggressive um, in a good way, aggressive in a good way. Um, the challenge is, uh, I think, and, and going back to everything that we've heard during these, these days, um, I think that we must really analyze uh, our strategies from the consumer point of view. We must think about how, how, how are we um, adding value to the trip, if I may say it like this. Uh, how are we managing their expectations? How are we managing disruption? How are we servicing them? It's much, it, it's, it's much beyond all the marketing strategies or the SEM tactics that we can apply. 
um, as as an industry, I think there's a room for improvement, like the music that we were listening in the beginning. There's room for improvement. Um, from an SEM perspective, I think that we, from now on and, and, and in the past too, but the pressure for being more efficient, more cost efficient, uh, will rise. So we need to be very conscious of the investment that we're doing and work in, in to have the qualified traffic again. Um, another big challenge is obviously to get rid of all these legacy systems and, and start living in the 21st century from a, a, a technological point of view. Um, apply AI because for SEM, we've been using, SEM uses AI in, in very different ways, but it's, it's, it's evolving. Uh, even yesterday, Google uh, announced in their Google marketing event, event a lot of, of novelties around around this topic, and I think there there will be many different challenges coming that we cannot even foresee. And last but not least, it's the challenge of people having the right skill set, the right not I will, I don't want to call it knowledge, but across organizations. Uh, have everyone on board with this idea. So customer really needs to come first. Digital is here to stay. We need, we must be relevant and we must deliver what we promise. And we promise a lot in our ads. Like we promise the world, right? So we better deliver it. So that that passenger comes back and back and back again. Um, I agree with all Shara's points, uh, to, be, to be honest, of course. Uh, it is, the uh, consumer trends are evolving, so we will be always in the process of redefining the right audiences. Uh, the digital landscape is evolving. We'll start changing how even we sell flight tickets. So. Uh, and uh, we use and we need to use more data-driven decisions and data-driven decisioning on that. So Vrimundo is definitely helping us on uh, shaping the right audiences uh, with uh, new products and new ideas to, to overcome and uh, uh, and stay up to date in the evolving digital landscape in terms of technology and with the robust reports in order to make the most consistent, the, uh, the most effective data-driven decisions. For me, the challenge is uh, understand what is the customer journey uh, post-pandemic because uh, maybe pre-pandemic, the the first touch uh, was uh, social media, but po but post-pandemic, the first touch start uh, with meta search because now the customers uh, decide based on the lowest price, and meta search is a, a really good channel because show or the the filter is uh, start with the the lowest price and if we understand what is the attribution model uh, post pandemic and how the the customer think now uh, we will uh, build a really strong strategy uh, and SEM can improve the the results add something because I know that I didn't answer to that point, which is what's the, the, the space of every mundo in all this? <laughs> you are close to our heart. <laughs> Sorry. Um, I think that my own challenge or our in, in TAP challenge to you and all our partners um, is not only to continue working in a partnership mode. We, we see you as an extended team. Uh, or an extension of our internal team. Uh, but the challenge is to be always two steps ahead of us. Bring on the innovation. 
uh, challenges, push us to, uh, to be risk takers, to adopt different, different tactics, whatever. Um, because as big companies that we all are, even if the sizes are, are different, it's a complex uh, matrix. So we always tend to think and act in a big way like we're elephants. And you have the capacity of being much more agile than, than we do, um, better risk takers than we are. So we need to um, embed that spirit within our business and our day-to-day -day work to really um, go further. So hopefully we will see you in all perform pros every Mundo events from now on to many, from many, for many, many years. And always with this uh, idea of innovating and bringing value to the business and to passengers. Thank you very much for to the three of you for being amazing partners. Always, always open. I think we do. We're out of time. Yeah. Um, but yeah, you want to say something else? Eh? You want to open for QA? Is that yes. That's it. I think we have. If anyone has one question, we might be able to do it. Okay. That's okay. I have a question yeah. to you all. Who works in SEM here? Who wishes to work in SEM here? Oh, God. <laughs> you, Alfonso, I have room for you in my team. Well, I just has a question. You have a question. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, we often get this question like, oh, but I have you know another partner that does my entire other marketing strategies and why you know I need to work with an other partner to only do SEM and in all your guest cases we even work very closely with your other agencies. So why do you think that works? Or why do you think it's important for an airline that such as yours to find the right partner to do this channel? Uh, it's important to understand the nature of the industry, to have a common understanding of what we're seeing, of the, the numbers that we are reading, the KPIs that we are tracking. It's very important to find the right people that we, that we understand success the right way. Uh, so this is the, the first that comes to my mind. Every mundo uh, have the experience, the no, the the knowledge for for this industry. No, no, no. no. In, for example, in Colombia, we don't have a expert agency for airlines, and every mundo have the product, and we uh, combine not just SEM, uh, SEO, uh, with the pricing uh, fit, we can show the right price. Uh, and, uh, and make an update in real time. And yes, every mundo is for me. He have the huge knowledge for this industry, and she uh, give the expertise for 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 the airlines. I don't know if I got the question well, but um, for me and, and for us. Um, Having the right partners, it's, well, first of all, it's key for success. And I think it's because you gain scale, you gain uh, expertise, specific expertise. So a uh, uh, web design company does what we do not do internally. Uh, every mundo does what we cannot do internally, not only because you have the tools, but you also have the expertise and the people to do it at scale. So we would need uh, an enormous team and, and, and other type of resources to do what we do with you or what you help us doing. Um, and that applies to all, all the partners that we have. It's really to gain scale, expertise, and the solutions that it's worthless to develop inside or to go buy and learn how to use and then hire people to use it. And don't get me wrong, I think that it's also important to uh, internalize uh, the knowledge so that we, we don't depend uh, uh, for life 
on, on these partners, of course. But one thing is not depending on being autonomous, and we do that with, with every mundo. Uh, we, we, we are autonomous in, in many different ways, even if we are working with your tools and, and your teams. Um, but getting that knowledge inside is one thing. Uh, getting it and then putting the partner aside because we can do it on ourselves, it's a completely different league. And at least for a company like with the size of, of TAP, uh, it's, it's not reasonable to think that we would be able to do what we do without the partners that we have. So that's my point. Hi. So, yeah. <laughs> so yeah, this is this is more of a comment um, than a question, but um, it's great. First, thank you for coming. It's great to see you guys here. I mean, I talked, uh, and at some point, I, I was involved in the discussion of the strategy. I've seen all the twenty base camps per day. <laughs> um, so it's great to see you guys here and and listen to the experience. And um, what I was gonna say. Um, it's truly a true partnership. Like I feel it's so much, it's so important to hear the insights that you have um, and integrate that to the RCM strategy. Like um, in this past three years, I've seen how the campaigns have exponentially grown. Like for example, with, with Aegean, with US, like um, that was a big growth, for example. Um, so yeah, just, um, keep them coming um, and just having you here is great and um, yeah, very excited to see what's to come. Thank you. Thank you, everyone.